Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here. For those who do not know, Alex took on the challenge recently of seeing how much he can grow a $30,000 account in 30 trading days and the results are in and he made $84,000 in less than 30 trading days, which turned his $30,000 account into $113,000. Alex recently put together a free mentorship course with his mentor, Bao, explaining exactly how he did this. The link is available at myinvestingclub.co slash Alex. There is limited seating every single week, so be sure to reserve your spot. As a very special gift to our YouTube viewers, I want to announce something very special. This is my personal phone number, my personal number that I am putting out to you guys. If you have any questions about joining MIC or on the fence about joining our wonderful club, you can contact me now directly and personally, and I will get back to you. All right, so yeah, so today, um, yeah, for, for those of you who this is your first webinar, welcome. Um, Thank you. We have this, yeah, we have this every Thursday, and like normally the same people show up. Actually, more and more people are coming, so I don't know if it's the same people or not, but welcome if this is your first webinar. Today, Harry's joining, joining me. We're going to talk about longs because that's, um, I think, probably most people in here are short bias, so this could be, you know, like if you're not a short seller yourself, Maybe if you're if you're a short seller yourself, maybe you can kind of get a little glimpse into what like longs are thinking about. If you're a yeah, longer, hopefully, sure. hopefully this helps. Yeah, of course everyone's here. For, I'm here for Harry. I want to know. Oh my God. That's why I'm here. I, I was gonna cancel it. Anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> so today we're gonna uh, we're gonna go over Harry's trades uh, for a couple different reasons. One, because I mean Harry's here. He's got he's got long trades that he wants to go over. Two, my trades sucked dick today and this week. <laughs> so we're going to go through that. Harry's going to go talk about some of his processes and what he likes to look for in, in stocks in general. Then we're going to, we have a weekly market sentiment where um, I kind of go over the, the market sentiment, what I think is, um, where I think we're headed, you know, where we're going to, where, where we just were, where I think we're going, like trends that we're starting to see. And then we're going to get, Harry and I will go deep, deep into um, conversation about longs and kind of like what we like really what we like to see and stuff. And then we'll end the Q, Q and a with, or we'll end the webinar with Q and a. And if at any time you have a question, please feel free. You guys can just ask at any time in the chat. Um, we will scroll up at the end to, and, and get all of them. And if it is, you know, pertaining to what we're talking about, we'll try, you know, we'll try to get to it right away. I'll shut up Harry. Oh yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> All right, five nine fish, Dalen. All right, yeah. So, so let's get going, Harry. Oh, talk us through some of these trades here. Okay, this one right here. Okay, um, okay, kind of like the uh, um. Well, okay, I I didn't know how this was gonna start, so like now I can kind of get into it. Okay, this one here, um, this trade basically, um, there was a yeah similar to Archon today. Archon was another one of these type of ones, and basically what sometimes. I remember seeing this like last March. This is when I started to kind of catch on and trades like this. Um, uh, for me, um, it's like a low float that really hasn't been kind of recognized yet, I find. And it's like kind of like an undiscovered gem. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for from, from this one was like, okay, there's like two types of low floats that kind of can gap up. There's the low floats that run super, super hard and the low floats that, that you know, um, you know, our overextended pre-market and the low floats that haven't been, you know, that haven't been, or sorry, that have been discovered kind of by the market and that are running, like, you know, there's some big ones, like, uh, I'm trying to think of some lately, um, like TCCO or like, you know, those, those ones that just keep running and they're really overextended in the market. Then there's other ones that, um, kind of fade like this and I've been noticing that they'll have like kind of a pop if they don't die right away. Archon today, it was kind of a weird one um, where like it was like there wasn't really a lot of soaking action I found and it was kind of like a little bit illiquid and I would have loved, um, I would have, I remember watching that one thinking like okay like um, like there was just like no soaking at all on it like the stock was kind of breaking down. I didn't really like that type of price action but ones like here you also know that shorts are trapped in like a zone between like the 480 and kind of the 520. So you also know that if that breaks, um, I was kind of anticipating a break because I saw that it just wasn't breaking down for the amount of selling that was going on at that time. 
I noticed that it just was not breaking down. The stock was not breaking down. So I had a feeling that this would pop. Um, and I know that for the most part, for the most part, shorts are kind of stuck in that tight little range. So it can offer kind of a nice little pop. And that's exactly what I got out of it. And uh, I was out pretty quickly because I know that these things can run, but I also know that these things can also fade really fast. And I'd rather just take the kind of safe money on it and um, kind of be out. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I was looking for. There's two types of longs that I also like in the morning, and we'll get into this later. But there's the longs that are overextended and I mean every short seller is thinking that this stock is weak like this stock just looks weak it looks terrible like this stock looks like it's going to go red on the day but what happens is that it looks so weak that it's almost too good to be true and it ends up popping and squeezing all of the short sellers and that was kind of the play that I was looking for on this all right and it seems like it works really good out of the open this kind of like this undiscovered yeah. if it's a you know just quietly kind of just goes and breaks five and you're just kind of there for it yeah 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 for sure but it seems and, and like i think it almost seems like so if this one were to tank it almost invalidates the thesis right because the thesis is that shorts kind of aren't getting let out but if it tanks then you know you can just cut it because it's like yeah exactly now they got their covers and now there's no demand higher exactly yeah yeah exactly yeah one's uh, like well, stocks like that aren't really straight for oh this one's a straight up pike all right if you want to see a pike this was the biggest pike i've had in a long time um this one was really terrible trading for me but the problem was was that i was thinking in my head like okay this is day two i don't know how much this move has to offer um you know like this one i wasn't really sure of even though it did keep going to like i think almost three bucks um this one was like one where, okay, below where I got in, just a little bit below, like I really thought that this was, yeah, like that level, like I thought this was done. I thought this one was going to fade, um, but it just kept soaking and soaking and soaking. And every time it tried to break down, it just couldn't break down. It couldn't break down. It couldn't break down. It kind of popped up a little bit. And then it tried to do the exact same thing where it couldn't break those same levels. And I'm like, okay, there's something going on here. Um, I'm going to take a little bit. And then when it kind of popped up, I was like, well, that's probably going to get stuffed and then it's probably going to fall down again. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking. It was just kind of a reflex, like an impulse of trade. And then it came back up and I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm already up like, you know, 10 cents or whatever. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to move on. And it was, it was like, I was watching another stock and it didn't do what I wanted. And then I saw this one kind of do what I wanted from the other stock. And then I took this one, but my mindset on this one should have been that, um, any short sellers that wanted to get in super quick are probably in around the $2 to the 2.10 mark. And as this started to move up, they were all underwater and I should have known that. And then when that, you got that VWAP bounce, um, I should have, I should have just been a little bit more patient on it. But also I was like, this is day two. This isn't a day one. It is F seal, which like, I really don't like the stock. I'm not, it's like SES. I'm not comfortable in that stock either. And it's almost like the further on that RKDA got, the less comfortable I got in that one too, you know? So it's like a lot of these companies are sketchy. They do play a lot of games. I do wish that I had held this longer, but I'm not, I am mad that I piked it, but I'm also not mad that I piked it because, you know, these are types of trades on day two where I want to be just kind of in and out quickly. Okay. Yeah. I like it. <clears throat> and this one. SD. This one's probably my favorite trade of the week. This um, one's Day this was day, day yeah this was day one yeah and for this one it was kind of the same thing as fsil where th there's kind of yeah i i know that i mentioned it already but there's kind of two types of patterns that i really like there's the ones that will just keep running pre-market all the way to the open and then there's ones that will uh look weak in pre-market and i'll be able to get like a super nice long scalp out of it off the open and then like that's pretty much it and uh, this one was one where I honestly thought that it was a little bit too overextended and it needed to pull back. But then again, I was like, man, every short seller is probably thinking this too. So maybe there is an opportunity for a long on it. Because I mean, that day, um, I was also out partying pretty late that night too. So I was like, listen, I don't want to force any trades. Like I should be patient. And um, I remember that 320 level the first time. But that kind of area where it just couldn't break down. And then I was like, 
no, I'm going to be patient. I don't want to have a big loss or anything like that. I, I just want to be patient on it. And then it kind of popped back up. And then I was like, oh, you know, I don't really know. And then at 320, it just, there was so much selling into that kind of like 320 area where it was just like trying to break down, trying to break down, trying to break down, couldn't, 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 trying to break down, trying to break down, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take some here. And then uh, I probably should have, I was just like, no, I'm just going to be patient on it because I know that every short seller is underwater. And then when I saw that kind of consolidation happen, I'm like, well, if anyone woke up late, which I mean, I did on that day, and I know a couple other people did. And if they're anticipating a breakdown, they're going to be short in that consolidation. So I'm like, no, I'll just hold it. And if it dumps, like I'll just sell into the dump. Like it doesn't really matter that much. And then it kind of came up and yeah, I was pretty much done with it after that pop. And these ones are also trades that I'll look for. This trade has a higher float. So kind of the odds of a reclaim or zombie for me, I know that like it's kind of less of an odd because it's a bigger float and it's harder to manipulate and you can't buy the float with like, you know, a couple million bucks. So you do need to kind of be aware of that, I guess. And this one, I was honestly looking for it to reclaim and then it just didn't and kept dying. So I was like, nah, I guess it's done. Right. And I, and I get that same way when I, I always judge a float. I'm like, when it comes to a float, it's can a float sustain being, you know, up 60% and hold it right like exactly you know can can that much because it takes a lot of capital you know that's a lot of capital to be up 60 percent right like can it sustain it you know like will that review up reclaim like will that just get sold into right like oh yeah and i think steven's question here is perfect where he's like how many uh how do you know how many times the stock has left to run i keep thinking after a few times where it's where it dips, it's due for a crack uh i've been seeing a few lately so how many times i mean for this one it was like I mean, this is like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six minutes of just trying to break down. And it just couldn't, you know, it, it was, it was trying to break down hard. And that's the ones where, you know, like you've been patient and you've kind of been sitting there and saying like, okay, I'm just going to be patient. And if it fades on something like this, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be mad. Like my risk was pretty minimal. I was just risking like maybe like 310 on it. Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here, Tosh Bradley from My Investing Club Chat. Just wanted to reach out to you personally and show you how to contact myself personally if you have any questions about joining MIC, about MIC in general, or are on the fence and need a little bit of guidance before you join. For the first time ever, I have put out my personal number for you to reach me directly among my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com and our Twitter and IG handles. Reach out today and get any information you need on what makes MIC so great and why you should join us today.